Johnny Dollar. Hi, Mr. Dollar. Hi, yourself. Who's that? You know, Jimmy. Jimmy? Sure, up here in East North Wilden. East North what? And I saved up the money for this long-distance call for my newspapers. Use my own money, because it's very, very important. Oh, well, I'm sure it is. But now you haven't told me, Jimmy, who? Jimmy Carter. You remember the artist. Artist? I helped you solve that case about the crook you were looking for up here. Remember? Oh, sure. In East North Weldon, Massachusetts. Yes. Well, what are you calling about, Jimmy? I can help you solve another case, Mr. Dollar. Can you? What kind? Well, it's it's murder, Mr. Dollar. What? Yes, sir. Murder. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. The station to which you're listening right now is an affiliate of the CBS radio network. That fact makes several important differences in the kind of radio service you receive whenever your dial is set here. Take the matter of news. Over this station, you hear frequent reports gathered by the foremost broadcast news organization, CBS News. Reports supplemented by the prospective commentary of such distinguished newsmen as Edward R. Murrow, Lowell Thomas, and Eric Severide. In addition, of course, this station provides you with late local news so that you may keep up with what's happening in your community. You hear top dramatic programs, comedy, variety, and music to fit your every mood. In addition, this station provides you with further listening entertainment courtesy of your favorite local broadcast personalities, plus the cream of today's crop of top songs. Well-balanced, highly listenable broadcast fare can come to you only through teamwork. The kind of teamwork made possible by the combined resources of CBS Radio and this station. And now, Act One of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Amalgamated Life Association Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Jimmy Carter matter. It was only last fall that I'd gone to the sleepy little town of East North Weldon up in Massachusetts to run down a heavily bearded man who'd stolen some money a while back from a furniture plant. It was little Jimmy Carter who'd really solved the case for me by drawing some hair and a beard on a poster. A poster of the bald-headed, clean-shaven mayor had shown him up as he looked before as the criminal. Sure, I remember Jimmy Carter. Well, yes, sir. That's why I'm spending my own money to make this long-distance telephone call from the telephone booth here in the drugstore. Because if you come right up here right away, I can help you solve a murder. Who's, Jimmy? But if that murderer ever finds out that I know who he is, well, well, that's why I think you better come up here right away. Yeah, well, uh, Jimmy... Parkinson, I see. I'm talking kind of fast because I used up all my money in this telephone, but, but, Mr. Dollar, I saw this other man throw him off that bridge. Did he know you saw him? Oh, I don't see how he could help it, but he didn't do anything about it, so, well, maybe he didn't see me after all. All right, what's the name of this other man, the killer? Well, his name is... I'm Mr. sorry, sir, but your three minutes are up. What? Well, gee, this is all the money I have. I'm sorry. Operator. Okay, I'll hang up there. The name, Jimmy. Goodbye, Mr. Dollar. Will you hurry up and come? The name of the killer. Goodbye. No, reverse the charges. Jimmy. Operator. Operator. <laughs> Expense account item one, ten cents. Phone call to the auto club for some route information. Item two, another dime for a call to Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau. It was pretty early in the morning, but fortunately he was in his office. Yes, Jimmy? Hey, Pat, listen. Yeah. I'm driving up to Massachusetts fast as I can. Well, good for you. Listen, will you? What? Andrew Parkinson. Get that? Yeah, Andrew Parkinson. What about him? Yeah, well, he died a few... Well, that is... He what? He died, and... Yeah. Well, it was supposed to be an accident, but I... Well, anyhow, he's dead. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, easy. What's this all about? I want to know who his insurance company is. You're a clearinghouse for that sort of information. That's right. Well, will you see if they have a representative or an office of an East North Weldon Mass? East North Weldon? That's right. It's just east of North Weldon. Oh, no. You know, up north of Fitchburg. Oh, that place I have heard of. Well, somebody in that company called it accidental. But listen, 
I have reason to think it wasn't. What? So if I can contact whoever it is up there... And listen, Pat, there may be a kid's Johnny, life at stake. Johnny, this is about as confusing as anything. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Just get me the name of the company that insured the life of Andrew Parkinson. Well, whatever you say. Good. But it may take a couple of hours. Okay, just get it for me. I'll call you when I get up there. <laughs> Item three, four dollars even for a tank full of gas. By the time I got to Fitchburg, it was a little afternoon, thanks to a slight argument with a highway policeman along the way. I made another phone call, item four, 55 cents. Pat McCracken. Did you find out that insurance company for me? Oh, uh, Johnny? That's right. Ah, yes, yes. It's one of the smaller outfits, Johnny. Does a lot of rural business. Amalgamated Life Association. Okay, thanks. Policy on Andrew Parkinson is issued by their local representative, Mr. Waldo Bottomley. They're in East North Weldon? That's right. Good. And the company's report on Parkinson says that his death was accidental. It's already been reported? Mm-hmm. Well, when did he die, Pat? The day before yesterday. And a claim's been filed? Yes, yes. $10,000 with a double indemnity clause. Wait a minute. Who's the beneficiary? Uh, Lucius R. Weatherby. Same town. Okay, thanks a lot. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, Johnny. Tell me what all Wait, this... nothing. I tell you, a kid's life may be in well, danger. what does a kid have to... Sorry, do Pat. I gotta hit the road. <laughs> It was after 2 p.m. when I finally pulled up in front of the combination drugstore and mercantile at the one business corner in the village of East North Weldon. One of the local citizenry, looking slightly under the weather, sat on the rickety porch of the store, hacking away at a stick of wood with an old pocket knife. Howdy. Hiya. You uh, happen to have a little drink about you, sir? No, but listen, where's the little boy who usually sells newspapers around here? Yeah? His name is Jimmy Carter. Yeah, that's right, sir. Jimmy Carter. Well, have you seen him? Do you know where he is? Seen him this morning. But he's not around here now. Nope. Do you know where I can find him? Nope. Do you know where he lives, where his home is? Uh, yeah. Well, where? Up the street. Oh, sure. What street? The Spruce. North Spruce. And the number? 18. Okay, thanks. Uh, listen, my name is Johnny Dollar. If you see him, please tell him I'm looking for him. Johnny Dollar, eh? Yeah. You, uh, uh, got the price of a drink on you? Some other time. Just be sure and tell him. Yeah. That's right. My name is Johnny Dollar. Mr. Dollar, where is he? What have you done with him? What? Jimmy, my son Jimmy. He said he had to talk to him. Oh, you. well, he did. That is, he called He's me on been the just phone. sitting around the house like he was sick or something all day yesterday. And he tossed and turned all night in his sleep. Mrs. Carter. Then this morning he jumped up from his breakfast, only he wasn't eating any of it. And he said he had to see you. He had to talk to you. He said he'd be right back. All right, now but listen. that was early this morning. So when he didn't come back, I went to the school, but he wasn't there. So I went down to the corner where he picks up his papers every noon from the bus, but he hadn't been there. You're sure? The papers, the bundle of papers, they were all still there. Now, listen, Mrs. And he Carter. hasn't come back here. Something's happened to him, Mr. Dollar. Something's happened to Jimmy. <laughs> Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Coming up to ten gallons, Mr. Johns. All right. The check or oil filter and air filter might pay you $1,000. How's that? Well, haven't you heard about Fram's big silver treasure hunt? Oh, yes. Heard something about it over my car radio this morning. What's it all about? Well, a regular filter check is so important that Fram Corporation is paying $60,000 to get car owners to check their filters now. $60,000 in cash? Yeah, this is Fram's silver anniversary. Last year, 10,000 secretly numbered Fram filters were distributed all over the United States and installed in cars during regular servicing. You may have one in your car and not even know it. A Fram filter cartridge worth 1,000 silver dollars. And if you do, I get a thousand bucks, too. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's check those filters now. Hurry, folks. You could win up to a thousand dollars in cash. 
Join the big Bram treasure hunt. Check your car filters now. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Jimmy Carter matter. Jimmy Carter, the cute little kid who'd helped me solve an embezzlement case up in the small New England town with the unlikely name of East North Weldon, who'd call me on the phone to report a murder. But when I got there, Jimmy was gone, disappeared. Jimmy said he was going to talk to you, Mr. Dollar. But that was early this morning, and he hasn't come back. What did you do with him, Mr. Dollar? Where is he? Well, I... I haven't seen him, Mrs. Carter. But he said... Well, he... He telephoned to me down in Hartford, asked me to come up here and see him because he... Well, he asked me to come up and see him. He idolized you, Mr. Dollar, ever since you were up here last fall. And when he said he had to talk to you, I thought you were already in town again. I wonder what he was so anxious to see you about. Oh, well... And he's been acting very strangely the last day or two. Ever since poor old Mr. Parkinson oh. fell off the bridge and was killed the other night. How well did he know this man, Parkinson? Oh, as well as he knew everybody in town, Mr... You don't think his disappearance this way could have anything to do with Mr. Parkinson being killed? Oh, well, what, how? How could it? I'm sure I don't and know. doesn't everybody say Mr. Parkinson's death was an accident? Yes. Yes, they do still. Oh, now stop worrying, Mrs. Carter. Jimmy will show up. If he doesn't, I'll find him for you. Oh, dear. Sure. I... Jimmy's okay. He'd better be. Jimmy had said he was calling me from a booth at the drugstore. As I drove back to it, I noticed the name of the proprietor on the sign over the flyspeck window. Waldo Bottomley. The man who Pat had said was local representative for the insurance company. There you are, Mrs. Atterbury. You just go in to take one of these every two hours. By tomorrow, you'll be all right again. Yes, sir? Mr. Bottomley? Yes, sir. My name is Johnny Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. I've heard of you, sir. All right, good. Now, look. But if you're here in connection with the death of Mr. Parkinson... Yeah? Well, in addition to representing Amalgamated Life Association... Oh, and the claim on Mr. Parkinson's insurance has already been sent down to Hartford. I know that. Well, I'm also the coroner hereabouts. Then it was you who pronounced his death as accidental? Yep. After Dr. Herbert examined the body for me. All right, now listen to me. Mr. Parkinson was an old man, Mr. Dollar. Had trouble with his feet. Eyesight wasn't so good either. Mr. Bottomley. So when he tripped against that old railing on the bridge the other night, and the railing gave way and he fell to the rocks below... Did anybody you know of actually see him trip and fall? Well, no, sir. Well, I think that Parkinson was murdered. And if I can find little Jimmy Carter... Jimmy? Have you seen him today? Do you know where he is? Well, now that you mention him, Mr. Dollar, he should be back from school by now and selling his papers. I asked you, have you seen him at all today? Early this morning he was in. Yeah? I changed a lot of pennies for him into nickels and dimes and quarters. All right, and then? And then he left. Hey, haven't you got a... Isn't there a phone booth here in the store? Booth is out the door, Mr. Dollar, around the side of the building. Then you wouldn't have seen him if Jimmy went out there to make a phone call. Only one might have seen him is old Lucius Weatherby. Lucius Weatherby? The, the town drunk. Wait a minute. You talking about that old character sitting out front? Oh, I've asked him not to sit there in his condition. But now that he's... Well, you see, Lucius is the beneficiary... Yeah, wait a minute. Lucius Weatherby is the beneficiary of Parkinson's insurance. Yep. As I was about to say... No wonder he wouldn't tell me anything about Jimmy. What's that, sir? So he killed Parkinson to collect the insurance. Jimmy saw him. And what was that? Bottomly, I have a few questions I'd like to ask that Lucius Weatherby. Now, now, wait, sir. Yeah? If you expect old Lucius to remember anything... You bet I do. Plenty. Then you'd best take along this bottle of medicinal brandy. What? Yes, sir. That'll be three seventy-five. Well, break it over his head. Yeah, but you don't understand. No? He can't remember a thing unless he's had a little... Mr. Dollar! All right. All right, Weatherby. Honey, you uh, change mind about buying me a little... Oh. Where's Jimmy Carter? What did you do with him? If you don't mind, let go of my collar, sir. Come on, start talking. Uh, Jimmy... That's right. Where is he? Uh, well, sir, I, I, I seen him this morning. You told me that before. Now, what did you do with him? Well, nothing, sir, I swear. He came out of the store this morning, went into that phone booth. Yeah, he did do that. Yeah, and then what? What did you do? 
Uh, now, sir, if I had a little drink, I could remember better. Oh, my old son, answer me. Uh, well, he went off in that car. Car? What car? Uh, well, he didn't want to, but... Who? Well, Who made him go off in a car? Well, if I could just remember, it was a man. Come on, who? Uh, somebody I know. Yeah? I'm sure I could remember if I had a little dream. Now, you listen to me, you lion. He's telling you the truth, Mr. Dollar. Oh, sure he is. Yes, sir. But if you give him a bit of this medicinal brandy to refresh his memory, truly... Okay, let me have it. That'll be three seventy-five, if you please. Okay, okay, here. I'll get you the change. No, Father. Because if this doesn't bring the truth out of him, so help me, I'll... Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. When friends drop in, let your hospitality show you're sociable in the modern manner. Pepsi, you know, is the favorite of the smart and young at heart. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. Have you tried a Pepsi lately? Yeah. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. The town drunk, who could only remember things with a drink under his belt. If you ask me, that's a lot of hooey. Nonetheless, item five, 375 for the bottle of what the local druggists call medicinal brandy. Old Lucius Weatherby started yeah. lapping it up. Might be fine, sir. <laughs> Mighty fine. All right. Now, listen. You listen to me. I'd better let him have a little more, Mr. Dollar, if he's to remember properly. Yeah, a little more. Oh, and here's your change from the... Lucius, $5. you say that when Jimmy walked out of the phone booth, he drove away with somebody. Yeah. Against his will. Yeah. Your change, Mr. Dollar. He forced little Jimmy right in his car. Who forced him? Well, now, let me... Uh, let me see. His name was... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, you know him, Barnaby. Think, Lucius. Think, Harvey. Come on. Yeah. Now, listen, you old son. I want to... Uh, ha uh, Harvey. Huh? Ah. It was Harvey. Harvey who? Uh, Barnaby, you know. You know everybody. Harvey Wilman? Uh, Harvey uh, Wilman. Yeah. Who is he? Well, he's not one of our more respected people, Mr. Dollar. Respected. Yeah? Sir. And come to think of it, I believe he was a distant relative of Mr. Parkinson. Yeah. What does he do? Where does he live? He does nothing, really. He was always trying to beg money from Mr. Parkinson. <laughs> Never got it, though. Anybody else? I ask you, where can I find him? Where does he live? Uh, Winter Wind. That's Winter. right. On the old farm out on Winter Avenue. You can tell it by all the new machinery out front. Okay, I'll see you later. Oh, your change, Mr. Dollar. <laughs> On the way out to Harvey Woman's farm, I suddenly realized that for once in my life, I'd forgotten to bring along a gun. Judging by all the equipment out front, Woman must have gone through the Alice Chalmers catalog and taken one of everything. But the farmhouse was nothing but a one-story clabbered shack. Half hidden at the back of it was a beat-up old sedan. Come on, open up, open up. Oh, no, good idea, I'm Jimmy. Jimmy! All right, Wilman, open up this door. I'll break it down. Wilman! Okay, brother, you asked for it. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, are you okay? Where's Harp? Behind you. Back at the door. Don't move, Dollar. I was afraid the kid got that phone call through to you. Too bad for you, he did. All right, look, Wilman. No, don't, Mr. Dollar. He'll shoot you. I know he will. He was going to kill me. He still is. The kid's right, Dollar. Up against the wall. Face the wall. Put your hands up high against it. Go ahead. I'm not carrying a gun, woman, if that's what you're worried about. Now that's something I'm going to find out for myself. Yeah? Yeah. That 
could be a mistake. Jiu-jitsu, huh? Not this one. <sighs> oh, well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hey. Come on now, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, it's okay now. Everything's okay. He was going to kill me. He was going to kill you. Oh, look, you, you, you and I kind of stopped in this tracks, didn't we? Hey, you know something, Jimmy? Now you're a real hero. Because this time you trapped a killer for me. Oh, gee. Item six, forty-eight fifty for a new sports jacket without holes in it. Yeah, Harvey Woolman had managed to get off that one shot. Item seven, sixty-one dollars even, a brand new bike for Jimmy. Why? Because he saved the company from having to pay double indemnity. Expense account total, including mileage of my car, $117. Unless you'd like to tack on a little extra fee. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. If your 1957 income was more than $5,000... Last year, when you filed your federal income tax report, you had to use Form 1040, the long form. Those who earned 5000 or less were permitted to use the short form, Form 1040A, if they chose. This year, the Internal Revenue Service is offering taxpayers a new Form 1040A, a simplified form with only 15 lines to fill out. The most important difference about this new form is that those whose 1958 incomes were $10,000 or less, and if you take only standard deductions, you're now permitted to file your return on the new short form 1040A. If you earned over $10,000 during 1958 or intend to itemize your deductions or other income variations, the long form 1040 must be used. The Revenue Service again reminds you to be sure to attach all W-2 withholding tax certificates pertaining to your earnings to the form you intend to file. Send your return to the District Director of Internal Revenue at the appropriate district office. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, San Francisco, a wonderful town. Yeah, for a murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Dick Beals, Larry Dobkin, Forrest Lewis, Edgar Barrier, and Jack Crucian. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. A father goes to extremes to protect a demented son as suspense follows next on the CBS radio network. W-O-W, Albany, New York. Everything is going at Henry S. Mantel's in Latham. Everything must be gone by Tuesday night. Going, going, everything must go. Yes, the values are going at Henry S. Mantel's of Latham. Mantel's is closing its Latham store forever. Everything is being sold at cost or less. Save up to 87% on these famous names. Simmons, Haywood Wakefield, Craner, Lane, and many others. Here are just two of the fantastic values at Mantel's. A three-piece Craner curved sectional living room suite, regularly $279.95, now $148.77. Inner spring mattresses, all sizes, regularly $29.95, now $17.95. Come out to Mantel's and make an offer. No reasonable offer refused. Remember, Mantel's of Latham closes its doors forever at 10 p.m. Tuesday, March 31st. Convenient terms and free delivery within a 100-mile radius at Mantel's of Latham, south of the Latham Shopping Center, open until 10 p.m. 5.30.